Hey guys, what's up, it's Eiflin here, and today we're going to be talking about your orbiter and everything that's inside it, because after the Vorge Prologue quest, you guys pretty much get thrown in here with nothing explained to you, apart from the basics of the market, the modding section, the foundry, and also the arsenal. So I thought it would be a good idea to just give you guys a little tour of everything, like absolutely everything that is in your ship, including some of the spoilers, but I will tell you guys what is a spoiler and what maybe is a spoiler, just so you guys can stay a little bit vigilant whenever you're watching the likes of a Warframe Twitch streamer video, like if somebody starts to edge towards something in the foundry that maybe they shouldn't be showing you type of thing, then, you know, that's what I'm basically going to be explaining in today's video. So if there is anything spoilerish in the video, I'll make sure to say before we actually get to that point. So let's go ahead and start at the Codex. Your Codex is your main hub for a lot of information in Warframe. So to begin with, we have the Quest tab. And this is where you're going to track and view what you have to do to get to other quests in the game. So this is basically your number one to-do list as a near player in Warframe. But I can't really talk any more about this tab without really spoiling anything. So we're going to move on to the Universe tab. So the Universe tab is where you're going to track a lot of your gear progression, right? Because you can level your Warframes, weapons, companions, arc wings, etc. from level 0 up until level 30. And whenever you do that, you get mastery XP, right? So your companions, you can see here are all the companions that are available in game. And if we click on one, we can see that we have it mastered, right? Or I have it mastered, at least. If we move on to the Warframes and Arcwings tab, we can do the exact same thing. It shows us that we own an Ash, and I've also mastered one, right? It also goes through the abilities, the passive, and the base stats of the Warframe. Some Prime Frames, for example, like let's say Mag Prime, have really fun and cool lore entries which you can sit down and read. I'm not going to read through all of it in this video. You can, you know, do that in your own time if you're interested. We can move on to the weapons tab and it's pretty much the same thing. It just shows us that we own one, we've mastered it, and then here's all the stats. It also so shows us the master rank requirement as well and it'll show that for the Warframes too given there is one. So that is those three pretty much gripped up. But moving on to objects, factions, and fragments, you notice with this one, you're not going to be able to see all of the information about everything that you can see here, right? So for example, if you look at the runner, we can't see everything about the runner because I've only scanned it 22 times opposed to the 30 times which I need to scan it. Now, whenever you're playing, if you bring out a codex scanner, you look through the scope of the codex scanner, anything that is glowing orange, you need more scans for. Anything that is glowing green, you don't need to scan anymore. So... Just scan away if you're interested in completing the codex. If not, it's not necessary. You don't have to do it. But there is some benefits to actually uh, scanning all of the bad guys, right? So if we take a look at the Corrupted Lancer, we can see uh, the resistances and weaknesses that it has indicated by these little symbols right here. So this is explained later on in the codex, but these plus symbols means 25% bonus damage. So if there is three plus symbols, it means 75 bonus damage from radiation, right? So if you have radiation, it's going to take 75% uh, of the radiation damage that you're dealing and then add that on top. And then for your slash, it's a negative. So it's 25% for every uh, little dash that there is, right? So this is minus 50% uh, or 50% resistant to the slash damage that is on your weapon type of thing. So that's worth keeping in mind. Every single container, enemy and fragment is going to need a different amount of scans to fully unlock everything. I'm not going to show you guys fragments because there's a lot of spoilers in there. And I'm not going to show you guys containers because honestly, there's nothing really to see there other than the, fa the fact that you have the fancy containers like scans. That's kind of the idea. But um, yeah, moving on, we're going to take a look at the modding menu, right? So the modding menu is where you can track what mods you've got and also where you got them from. So if we hover over adaptation, we can see that we got that from an arbitration. So this is sorted by rank. We can sort it by, you know, all these different filters right here. So price, for example, which is, um, I'm guessing how much it sells for in credits. I don't really sort by price that much. So uh, we've got polarity. So it sorts it in all the different polarities that there is. We've got uh, duplicates, how many duplicates we have. And also, uh, let's say for example, the ones that we got recently, all these different ways of sorting it so you can get an idea of, uh, you know, what type of mods are in game, what you need to go ahead and get and all that stuff. So if you like, let's say we sort by uh, da, 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 rating, you can see that I have a bunch here that are undiscovered because I don't currently have any of these in my modding section because I sold them 
for uh, credits, right? Or endo or whatever the case may be. But I can still see where I got them because I have picked them up once or twice, right? So that is the modding menu. Art gallery, you level up your mastery. You can see more really cool art. It's just a nice thing for you to, to look at. Moving on to relics and arcanes. Relics and arcanes is by far my favorite menu in the codex simply because if there's a new prime frame that comes out, you come in here, you type in, let's say for example, the most recent Mesa, you can see the relics that uh, you need to get to get Mesa. And if you click on them, you can see the drop sources off of these relics, which is awesome, right? So if a new prime frame comes out and you want to know how to farm it, just do that. And it'll show you all the different places to get them. Um, I do have videos explaining how to get the different prime frames and the best places to farm these relics. So if you want to, you can go ahead and check those videos out as well. But if you're looking for the likes of a vaulted prime frame, let's say for example, Loki prime, right? You can't see these if you're a newer player because you're not able to get these relics. So it shows all the obtainable relics and relics that you've previously owned. But if I were to waste all of these relics, for example, then I wouldn't be able to see these relics in the codex anymore because they're not currently obtainable in game, if that makes any sense. So that being said, we completely brushed over arcanes. Arcanes are buffs for Warframes and other pieces of equipment, which you're going to unlock later on. I'm not going to tell you how to get these, but you can view all the stats for them just by taking a look at them in the Codex. They are 110% worth it, uh, opposed to previously not being worth it because they don't really matter too much. But now that uh, they're easier to farm type of thing, it's more like... Yeah, you can get these and these can make your builds so much better type of thing. So they're very, very accessible and you're going to learn very, very early on if you hang around the Warframe community how to get these. But it is kind of a spoiler. So just keep on playing. and Don't worry too much about these uh, if you see them on the likes of a build video, for example. So moving on to the training and missions tab. These basically do the exact same thing. The one that I would say pay most attention to is the damage tab under training because it explains the damage types, the elemental combos, and also uh, those little symbols that I was explaining earlier. So each plus minus is listed, or listed indicates 25% uh, change. So for example, damage bonus from electricity, 75%. So you got the electricity sign, and then free pluses, which equals 75%. And then resistance to puncture is 50% because you have the puncture sign, and then two minuses, right? And then it shows you how to make all the different elemental combos in here. So make sure to take a read at this. And the same goes for if you're stuck in any of the different missions in Warframe, you can take a look, and this is going to basically explain them. So with all that being said, that is the codex. That is basically the bulk of it that is uh you know the most difficult thing to explain because there's a lot in there but moving on we're gonna go in this direction here so this is your syndicate console and you're gonna have access to this at master rank free choose whichever syndicate you want but i recommend for newer players choosing steel meridian because there's a mod in here for a shotgun known as the heck which gives you 200 percent multi-shot which makes the entire game a breeze. So if you're a newer player and you're struggling, choose Steel Meridian, but it doesn't really matter which one you choose because you're always gonna be able to get uh, everything from the other syndicates via trading, right? So don't worry too much if you didn't choose the syndicate that you wanted to choose because you can work your way back up, like you can earn the reputation back. So for example, uh, I don't uh, ally with Steel Meridian right now, but if I wanted to go with Steel Meridian, I could go ahead and, you know, offer some things or not offer some things sacrifice some things to uh initiate back with them right and earn reputation with these guys because whenever you originally initiate with these people or the syndicates in general you're going to get a little sigil which you equip to your warframe and then that is going to convert some of the xp that you get in missions into syndicate uh standing right and you can also earn that via your uh, syndicate missions which you can see on this little console here so this is your navigation and you can see that i have a lot of writing here you can decorate your ship too you go to your navigation and this is pretty straightforward this is where you just choose the mission that you want to play up here in the top right hand corner you can see this little taskbar, and this is going to be a bunch of different stuff which you can do on a regular basis so any events that show up will be up here any quests are going to be up here any alerts any invasions any syndicate missions any fisher missions and any sorties that are available will appear up here in the top right hand corner basically things for you to do right now which will give you something will appear up in the top right on your navigation which is awesome so that is all there is to say about that one 
here is the news tab and also there's a spoiler on screen right now i'm going to put a t-shirt over it it's gone now um but here is the news tab this is basically where you can see all of the latest information from the developers about warframe so in 41 minutes there's going to be a prime time which is a show that they do every single thursday at midnight where you can watch de megan and de rebecca get killed by uh whatever new thing is in the game so that's the thing so the latest one is the the orb mother yeah you can watch them get killed by that or crash into a wall of k drive really depends what they feel like doing next up is conclave don't even care about this just it's pvp pvp sucks in this game you can do it or not i mean i'm warning you not to do it because it sucks but you know it's there it's another faction in itself but i, I don't know i don't recommend it uh <laughs> over here you have your market and in your market you can buy cosmetics for platinum you can buy warframes for platinum weapons for platinum basically everything in here you can buy with platinum but you can also buy blueprints for warframes and weapons with credits right so you can use the blueprints to craft a weapon in the foundry right so if we go to primary weapons for example and let's say we're interested in the extra extra just right we can uh go ahead and either purchase it or we can purchase the blueprint for twenty thousand credits right and you can see everything that you need for the extra just by clicking this little build icon here it needs credits 20,000 needs two argon crystals two repeller systems 175 oxium and 8.5k salvage so we take this we take this blueprint so let's just go ahead and purchase it and then we go down into our foundry which is found here down into the right and then we type in extra just and there it is and then we just go ahead and we press ok and then it does a big old craft and then we have it in our arsenal implying we have enough warframe and weapon slots so up in the market you can also buy extra warframe and weapon slots forma or it can catalyst or it can reactors anything that you want is in the market uh the foundry is where you craft things you can craft things with the resources that you have and you can also see um how many resources you have if i can remember how to do it components there you go so you can see all of the different resources that you have stockpiled up here's a bunch of mine uh but be careful again if you're watching somebody play warframe because there may be a few spoiler-esque things that show up in the foundry which uh as a new year player you may not want to see if the person that you're watching hasn't crafted the really super duper tux, top secret things yet so yeah there's that and then we have the modding section over here modding section is where you can see all of your really cool fancy mods you can uh transmute them by selecting four so if we go ahead and we select four coiling vipers we can transmute them into another mod this is very very hefty on your credits so if you're a newer player i don't recommend doing this only ever transmute the rare mods because then you have a higher chance of getting the rare mods you can upgrade mods so if we take another coiling viper and we press fusion and we use our endo which is up here in the top right hand corner press this little plus symbol we can spend credits and endo to rank it up to max rank and there you go now that mod is more powerful and it does a uh, bonus of what it originally did at its lowest rank right and then we can also go ahead sell our mods or dissolve them so sell dissolve imply we have one or multiple selected if you're playing on pc you can use your middle mouse wheel to select all of them at the one time and then bulk sell them or bulk dissolve them you can also go ahead and put together your iotin treasures right so an iotin amber star right here we can select this and we can auto install into this pineapple is what it's commonly referred to we can put in our cyan and amber stars and this is going to increase the amount of endo it sells for to maru at marie's bazaar on mars right so move out of there because we've done everything there this is the incubator where's my cat here's my cat you can make cats in warframe also dogs these are called cavats it's got a nice little wizard like hat on it okay and uh you can also make dogs called kubras so this is a kavat and the dogs are called kubras and you get this after the hile of the kubra quest and you upgrade your kavats the same way you'd upgrade your warframes and weapons in your arsenal which is over here so not gonna show you guys anything like in depth in here because it's all for another video but you can go for your different warframes right you can select a different warframe and equip it same with your weapons and then you can upgrade your weapons by selecting upgrade and doing all that jazz don't do what i just did because that was not matching the polarities up and then you can also customize your stuff so let's say i want to make my sancti tigris look the exact same as my gara copy warframe colors 
boom, now it looks cool and it matches and I can add cool accessories to my Gara, which I've purchased with platinum from the market or I purchased with Tenogen. So here's a, here's a better looking Gara, for example. This Gara looks sick. I love this Gara skin. Uh, but yeah, so here's accessories on my shoulder, which I bought from Prime Access. Also, here's my clan emblem. Really cool stuff. And uh, yeah, there's other things in the arsenal as well, such as uh, different modes, vehicles, for example. So Itzel is your Arcwing, Imperator Vandal, which is your Arcwing weapon. You got heavy weapons as well, which is from a uh, thing that you have to do in Fortuna. Uh, you've got your K-Drive, which is also a really cool thing as well. Just another means of getting around. And then that is pretty much that, apart from your gear, gear wheel, which you can add different pieces of gear, such as fishing spears and uh, mining lasers, gif glyph displays assassination beacons etc and then we've got obviously our little companion this is where we equip it so we can even either equip a sentinel or we can equip a, a little kavat or kubru right so that is all that cool stuff moving on to relics this is where you look at all the relics that you've accumulated or accumulated what's the word I, I don't remember the word but you can look at all the relics that you've gathered from playing and then you can upgrade those via the use of these little things here. These are called Void Traces and you get Void Traces by completing Fisher missions with or without a Void Relic equipped. And these Void Relics are going to drop different Prime Weapon Parts and Prime Warframe Parts. So using your little traces here to upgrade them is going to give you higher and lower chances of getting specific parts. So if you make this Radiant, we have a higher chance to get the Cernus Prime uh, Lower Limb, but we have a lower chance to get the Bronco Prime Receiver. Just look at the little bars on the right hand corner. So yeah, that is pretty much that. And again, another tip for here, if you wanna, let's say for example, farm something specific, you type in the thing that you wanna farm up in the top left hand corner, and then it will show you all the relics which drop the specific parts for the thing that you're trying to farm. So there is a cool tip. So with all that being said, Everything past this point in this video is going to be a spoiler. So if you don't want anything in Warframe to be spoiled for you, I recommend clicking off the video now. I'm going to give you guys five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And we're now in spoiler territory. So we're going to be taking a look at this room over here first. And this is the room that you can access with Nidus or that you can get into if you have that big purple zit on your neck and it's been growing on your neck for seven days okay so we're going to go ahead and choose nidus and we're going to go into this room and our nidus is going to have his head open up and if you have the zip you can sit on this chair and it's going to pop it for you but of course it has to have like a little tentacle thing coming out over it because it has to be growing for a space of a week and this thing also talks to you which is pretty cool and creepy all at the same time so moving on we have our focus so down in here if you were paying attention, you would have noticed a thing in my arsenal that said Cenerik. This is your operator. So basically the little man who controls the Warframes. Okay, so this guy, he's blindfolded. And you can customize him, his different abilities, right? So his focus. So you got Zenerik, which is your energy centered one. Vazrim, which is based around healing. Yunari, which is based around armor and staying alive. Madurai, which is based around damage. And Anaramon, which is based around melee, right? So... All these different focus skills it's down to you to choose which one you want to go for whenever you get to the point that you want to choose all this stuff we also have different equipment which is what i like to call the wristwatch and uh all that stuff so you can equip different wristwatch wristwatches to your operator and it's going to shoot a different pew pew beam laser thing so that's a thing that is definitely fun and cool and a lot of fun to play around with whenever you get there and of course you can customize your operator as well moving on to the last bit of the ship i'm running out of breath <laughs> our little personal quarters which has a massive spoiler in it and uh yeah so this is your personal quarters where you can hang out and you get this past a certain point in your quests in a warframe and this is just kind of here for show and you can also turn on music which let's just go ahead and demonstrate that from scanning the little suma chord things i think they're called uh while you're playing right so go up here and let's go to the best song in the game which is this one is it gonna play it is gonna play there we go so it's got the song playing in the background i've got an atlas noggle hanging from there and yeah that's your ship that is everything in your ship you can customize it too that's everything explained 
sort of quick fire guide to your orbiter. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, if you learned something new, hit the like button below. I doubt it though, because it's just kind of going over everything for newer players. But if you're excited for more Warframe content coming in the next coming days, hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next one.